let's go through an example of a data flow diagram. Suppose I say to you, uh, a vendor sends me an invoice. I record it in my accounts payable book. And I then generate a check to the vendor in 30 days. A simple enough problem. Let's look at what makes up the components of a data flow diagram. And remember, it should be picture-based so that we can eliminate ambiguities. A data flow diagram only has four symbols. The first symbol is called a process, which is a bubble. And we define a process, we define a process as something that changes data. In other words, is it not true that when an invoice comes in and we pay it, that indeed we've changed data from an invoice to a check? We have transformed it. And what Jordan told us is that if you don't change data, then perhaps you don't really have a process. But let's go on. The other symbol that we need to look at is what we call a data flow. And a data flow is known as data in motion. In other words, it's going someplace or it's coming from someplace, but it's on the move. The third symbol is what we call a data store, which is somewhat the opposite of a data flow. A data store is data at rest. And the last item symbol is called an external by a square, which is something outside the system. It is, if you will, a domain, a beginning and an end, a point that we do not control. So with these four symbols now, let us see if we can show you what a data flow diagram looks like if someone described to you uh, the steps and events that I just did. So let me erase this and then show you. We said that the vendor sends an invoice. Well, what is a vendor, logically? Now remember, we're going from the physical world to the logical world. The physical world, the user says, it's a vendor. In the logical world, I say it's an external. It's something that we don't control. We don't know when we're going to get it exactly, but it will come in at a certain time. So here's our first transition, transformation from a physical world to a logical one. And what do they send? They send something that's coming to us in motion. So therefore, we need a data flow and that data flow is indeed an invoice. The invoice comes into a process. The process that I told you was that it's recorded, it's put in an accounts payable file, and 30 days later it is paid. Well then, the process, of course, is a bubble which we would normally number and we would give it a name. Very often we give it a name by its result or whatever the user wants to call it. In this case, it's paying and recording invoices. Now, when it comes in, I said that it updates the accounts payable file. Well, what is the logical equivalent of an accounts payable file? Well, that would be data at rest. So what we would use in that case would actually be a data store called accounts payable file. And at some point we would read that accounts payable file. The arrows incidentally going out means that we're adding something to the accounts payable file. The arrow coming in means we're then reading it at some point or accessing it at some point. And what do we do? we indeed send a check. So it's leaving the process in action. We'll call it a check. And who does it go to? Once again, a vendor. Now based on this, 
I have established an unambiguous, looks just like a blueprint, process of what I describe to you physically. This indeed is the logical equivalent using a tool called a data flow diagram. It shows the flow and the boundary of what's going on. It doesn't show us everything. It doesn't define the data. It doesn't tell me exactly what's going on inside. We'll talk about that in a few moments. But it does show me an equivalent. Now, let's get back to decomposition. This is the car, but is it all the parts? And one of the secrets here is when you see the word and, it immediately begins to tell you that maybe there's more than one thing going on. So the question comes, can we decompose? Can we bring down to a lower level? Is it just this, or is it more than this? Well, let's take a look. If we really took a look at what was going on step by step, we could decompose this down which means I would have to have at least two bubbles. This one I would call 1.1, and it would have to balance with the parents. Now what that means is that if I took the, the parts of the car that I took apart and I put them all back together, what do I still have to have? I still indeed have to have a car. So there must be a balancing between all of the children, as we call them, or decomposed layers, and the parent. This in the form is applying the same concepts of long division. We're going to break this down to a much lower detail level. Well, the vendor still sends an invoice. But then what happens is a more decomposed part would be that we would create an entry in accounts payable. And I would call this record invoice. And with one in and one coming out, I would say that this is more, this is already a process. And then what happens is really a second step in which I would have 1.2, which is pay the invoice, which is really truly a separate step. And in that case, I would read the accounts payable file and I would send a check to the vendor. Now, comparing these two, if you were to put them together, they would indeed give you the parent. But looking at them separate, we see that they're more decomposed down as parts. And perhaps there are many types of accounts payable checks that are sent to vendors that don't necessarily come in through the mail or whatever. So it is possible that this part, in the same way as a Michelin tire, could be reused, which is important. So what we're really saying now is this is the logical equivalent to the discussion that we just had with the user. This then was used to get to that. This process, while it is a form of functional decomposition, is called leveling. So leveling belongs to the family of decompositions of data flow diagrams. Now looking at this, it's clear that there are things that it does not do. Uh, we do not have a complete specification. What we have at this point is flow, what comes in and what comes out, not when it happens, and the boundaries, which is the vendor in this case, of that particular process. A very important piece of information for us to understand. 